I look up to you. Kiss my stars. No, really, I do. <laughs> you are much smarter than I am. What was your score? Just 138. Oh, that's... I know, I know. <laughs> that's exactly 54 points below you. That's one of my comments. I'm not as smart as you. But you don't have alcoholism in your history. I really don't think that balances out. Well, if I was prego, somebody would have to take the bottles away from me so I don't give birth to some horrible mutations. I have absolutely no impulse control. Look, I'm reasonably sure some instincts would emerge <coughs> from people doing it. Reasonably. Oh, thanks. Thanks for repeating it. I'm reasonably sure you actually believe that. Look, Eva, this is really serious. Quite possibly the most serious thing in the history of anything. I know. Look, I suggest that we do a pro-con list, not so we could take cheap shots at each other. I really want to see where our minds work, what we have to do to actually move forward. I understand that logic. But it's not the same as deciding what to eat or which hairstyle to try or which movie to watch tonight. The stakes are too okay, high. Okay, no, strut it then. Forget the list. Why don't you just say it, okay? Do you want children? I say yes. I want children. But what do you say? No, I don't. It's okay. Look, we're young. We still have at least 10 years or so before your reproductive system won't be so upset. Now, I know I'm not the easiest person to deal with, but come on. Neither are you. Why don't we just, why don't we just spend time together, try to overcome the things that we're just going to tear our hair out and see how we feel in a few years. That's very helpful. And very foolish also. Under the circumstances, it would be a classic case of codependency. But since you can easily pass it off as self-preservation, you're correct. It could work. And to be fair, I do have feelings for you. It's hard not to when you're standing in a room full of dead bodies and you suddenly see somebody else alive, finally, one other person in all that death. I love you for being around. But I don't love you in a way that makes me, you know, want to tear my clothes off and just go for it. Hey, look, if it's my looks, we can have the computer just for light. Yeah. Walter, the day, no, it's not that. You're actually reasonably attractive. <laughs> Thanks. I believe you. Because you said reason. You're very pretty. That's one of my points. Thank you. See? We could do this. It just takes time. Whether or not we are friends. I don't think there's anything else we could be since I have no desire to hurt you. You seem to feel the same way. So given that the opposite moral enemies are friends, that's a pretty good start, huh? Is. What? Is friends. It's is. <laughs> I know that seems counterintuitive, but that's how you say it. I mean, that's the proper way to construct that sentence. Whatever. Do you really think you could get over that? By correcting you all the time, fixing your mistakes, explaining things that when you don't do or say them right? You know, it's a well-known fact that our species, men and women, both try to find mates who are less intelligent than they are. Mm. Once again, it's pretty irrelevant, isn't it? But my IQ is much lower than yours. It's just a fact, and I've already accepted it. It's actually... Well, I don't know. It's kind of sexy. Sexy? Yeah. Look, I've always liked smarter women. It's kind of comforting, actually. Yeah, look, all the other women on D-Deck were about the same level as me, so... Conversation was usually pretty poor. <laughs> to be honest, all the men on A deck were snobs. Really? When David came up with that system thousands of years ago, I don't think he saw it as segregation. I think he saw it as the right thing to do, to make sure like stayed with like. Okay, well, maybe this is nature or God or some, something with some things. Way of trying to mix things back up. Don't you find it amazing at all that of all the ships were the only one left that three months before we arrived at Lisa? Like kills everyone, except us. What are the odds of that? 900 trillion to one, give or take a few billion. Hey, look, I, okay, that was rhetorical. I know, I made that up. Look, see, I don't know why, but you pull something over on me and, oh, I don't know, that is smart and sexy. <laughs> Pro number 16, you are a masochist. <laughs> I'm gonna go with Khan there. You're still not getting it. It isn't a question of time, Alan. I won't change my mind. How do you know? Because it isn't about you. It isn't even really about me. It's it's about this ship, this this universe, everything. Everything ends. Con number whatever plus two, you are a fatalist. No, I'm a realist. It doesn't have to end. We are perfectly healthy, viable individuals who could, between us, raise a new generation. 
I see that not only as an obligation to our ancestors, but to all those who will come after us. We're either going to make the future or we're going to destroy it. 10,000 years. Our families have been on this ship for 10,000 years. When is it enough? When does the universe finally say, well, congrats, human, you had a good run. Time to make room for something else now. I think it's saying that right here, right now. Look, look, our ideology is probably never going to jail. Look, I really think that with the technology we have and the brains we have, we can do exactly what David sent us to do. David saved us from the expansion of salt for a reason. We can be fruitful and multiply. David did just what he was programmed to do. It's as simple as that. There's nothing watching out for us. There's no great plan that we're following. We're just doing the best that we can. Look, and continuing our species is the best that we can do. I don't want to. Why? For Jonas' sake, A why? million reasons all over my list. I don't want the responsibility. I wouldn't be a good mother. I don't want to be turned into some religious icon thousands of years from now by people who can't get their heads out of their asses any better than the people in the days of Jonas hood. I don't want to be Adam and Eve for those reasons and so many more. I want all this to end. Okay, but we're not like them. They didn't even know why the sun rose and set every day. We don't have to start from scratch. We already have all the basics out of the way. My God, think of the possibilities. We could teach our children how to be rational and intelligent, not cowering paranoid seeing demons and angels and everything. It would, it would not, again, it would not be like Adam and Eve. It would be Alan. Evil. I mean, come on, that's just strutting poetic right there. Yeah? Do, do you ever have deja vu? Not that I know of. I can't shake the feeling we've done all of this at some point in the past. Well, I can guarantee you we haven't. I never saw you play the place. I know, I never went to the lower decks. My parents told me it was too dangerous. I know, I know it's silly, but I was little and I believed it and I had no reason to. Hey, I snuck up once. Oh, yeah. Caretakers caught me and they said disintegration is the normal punishment for leaving your debt. Since I was under 18, I just got off with a fresh warning. Oh, how nice of them. I thought so. It was effective. I never tried that again until three months ago. And I'm really glad you did it. You know, I feel close to you than anyone else in my entire life. I'm positive it's only a matter of time before I do love you. But I know, you know it works. <coughs> things I never told anyone before. I cannot shake the feeling that this is destiny, that you and I are together for some purpose. <sighs> Severe days. Okay, okay, look, all I know is that I wake up every morning and the timer ticks down and as soon as we land, we're going to be wandering around on a planet that no human has ever seen before. And I want to share that with, with more than just you. I want to hear the hum of a crowd of people. I want to see people laughing and running. I want to build a gazebo by a lake where our children and their children all their descendants sit and enjoy a sunset just like the ancestors do. A gazebo? What's that? Well, it's, it's like a house. It doesn't have solid walls. Sometimes there's a swing or a bench in it. I saw a picture of the archives once. They just, I don't know, it stopped living all this time. This is really, really familiar. Okay, well, just, can you just stop trying to change the subject here? I'm not. But you're going on and on about deja vu, and I'm trying to explain what the big picture is I here. see the big picture, Alan. I've read the histories. I've counted down the days, too. I saw everyone I loved die all around me. I told you. I don't want the responsibility. There's no one else who will take it. Well, tough. Do you have any idea how selfish you are? No, I don't. I'm not. Yes, you are. You're the most selfish person in the history of humanity. How can you not see that? Because it doesn't matter what happens in the future. What matters is now. Look, I'm not going anywhere. I can't stand being alone. But even though I want to stay with you, it doesn't mean I want to form a family, fall into some ridiculous routine, and raise a whole new civilization. Are you seriously saying these thoughts haven't crossed your mind? To have the routine and the life together, and everything that comes with it. You're telling me the possibility hasn't even occurred to you that all this could, could happen for a reason? I thought about all of that, Alan. I thought about it the first day I met you, and all that night. And I woke up screaming, and you came and stayed with me. I thought about it some more. And that's when I decided what I want. And I haven't changed my mind since. Did I just snore? Was it my breath or something? I mean, because I could do that thing where I sneak out of bed real quick, brush my teeth, and slip back in and pretend that I woke up when you did and just have miracle breath first thing in the morning. <laughs> really, Eva, really. 
What was so bad about me that it took you a single day and I had to decide kids just weren't in the picture? Alan, it isn't you. It's me. Wow, gee, I've never heard that before. Alan. No, don't give me that, okay? Just because I'm not as smart as you doesn't mean I can't understand. I want you to tell me the truth. You're not listening to me, Alan. I am telling you the truth. It's me. That's as truthful as I can be. I just wasn't made for kids. I don't have the, the motherhood gene, I guess. I'm not saying I have the fatherhood gene either. I just see it as my duty. So you don't even want kids for a real reason, just some crazy notion you've come up with. What other conclusion is there? 